Hello everyone, my name is Kevin with MRU Studios and today I wanted to go over the use of two different tools to export scenes or sets, characters, and props from Daz Studio into Blender. One of them is the Daz to Blender bridge, which you see here, which is available, available from Daz 3D's website. The other is Diffeomorphic. Now I've done some tutorials already on the use of Daz to Blender Bridge, uh, specifically some issues you might experience with hair after the export into Blender. There's some settings you can make in the Cycles Render Engine to adjust the hair so it looks good. Um, you can check out those videos. I'll link them in the description below for easy access, but I'll kind of go over some of what I discussed in those vid in those videos here today. Uh, but we'll go over the Daz to Blender bridge, we'll go over Diffeomorphic, we'll kind of compare what they, what they look like and what the characters look like after export, and I'll discuss why I feel Diffeomorphic is the better tool. So I want to thank those who in my previous videos suggested in the comments, hey, why don't you try Diffeomorphic? I knew about the tool before, but it's something I never tried until recently. Recently, and I'm very thankful I did. Special shout out to Automot, one of the viewers here of the channel, that uh, kind of helped me out with Diffeomorphic, and I got it set up. It's a little more complicated to set up, but I think it's worth it. There's a uh, there's more you can do with it. So with that. I wanted to let you know that the new visual novel I've been talking about so much in my videos is finally released link above. If you want to check it out, click that link and it's a 30 minute episode. It's an animated visual novel, a journey, high quality audio and 3D animation I've been working on. It's what I'm using to push myself to get even better at 3D animation and the series will become will, will improve as time goes on. But I hope you enjoy it. Please check it out. Uh, click click the like button if you like subscribe hit that bell notification icon and uh, check it out so joining me today to demonstrate both the use of the Daz to Blender bridge and Diffeomorphic is the amazing Sharon Walker who you will see in the visual novel say hello to the audience here Sharon absolutely beautiful let's get started <laughs> Alright, this is where you obtain the Daz to Blender bridge. It's on Daz 3D's website. And this isn't necessarily a step-by-step -step process for installing the Daz to Blender bridge or Diffeomorphic. It, from what I remember, it's very straightforward to install, but you might have an issue with the version number of Blender you're using, particularly if you install the Daz to Blender bridge and you update Blender. You either have to reinstall the add-on or you can move the contents of the add-on from the previous version folder to the new one. The thing you have to make sure of is when you do install the Daz to Blender bridge, all of the add-on files are located in the right folder. So an example of this, let's say, uh, you know, Daz, I'm sorry, Blender 3.0 is the latest version. So we have a con configuration folder and a scripts folder. The one thing you have to make sure of is when you have the add-on installed that it's here in this, that it shows up in this folder because this is where all the add-ons are. DTB is the Daz to Blender bridge and this is all the files associated with that. So what I do, particularly if I'm updating to a newer version of Blender, let's say Blender 3.0 is the latest version now. Let's say Blender 3.1 comes out and we have this folder here, okay? And all our scripts are here. But we don't have the Daz to Blender bridge files in that folder. I just go into the previous folder, path, and I select the Daz to Blender bridge folder and then I place that in the add-ons for the new Blender folder, which in this case would be 3.1. When you do that, the Daz to Blender bridge will show up properly in Blender. Now I can show you where to get to the add-on so you can install it, and that will allow you to access the Daz to Blender bridge from Blender. So let's go into Daz Studio right now, and we are going to export a character. I'll show you how to access the Daz to Blender bridge there. So let's open up Daz Studio. 
here we are in Daz Studio. Now, this is diffeomorphic. I'll get into that a little bit later. But what we want to do is load a character. And I've already got a character selected, Sharon, as you saw earlier. I'm going to select her, and she's set up here. I'm going to load her into the scene, make sure she's ready. And I'm going to add some unrigged props to her, attach them to her based on some smart content that I have. The reason I'm doing that is I want you to see what can potentially happen with the Daz to Blender bridge. It doesn't manage unrigged props properly, or at least from what I've seen with the smart content I have. If the like clothing works well because the clo the rig of the clothing is connected to the rig of the character, so it works fine. But unrigged props don't. And we'll take a look at her. Here she is in all her glory in the in NVIDIA iRay. <clears throat> But we have her set up, and you'll notice she's in the T pose. There's a particular reason for that. We won't get it in. We won't get into it in this video. It has to do with the way I export the characters to apply Mixamo animations in Blender. We're not going to be doing that. I will create a future video on that, and I'll also show you the tool I use that comes from a third party. I think I believe it's a published artist artist named Agent Unawares, and they create this. Genesis 3 to Genesis 8 pose translation from the A pose to the T pose. Because Genesis 3 uses the T pose, I believe. Genesis 8 uses the A pose. So what we'll do is select the character and we'll go into the pose controls. We're going to go to that, I believe it's a script, and we're just going to set her to the A pose. Like I said, right now, you don't have to worry about this. When you bring in a Genesis 8 character, they will be in the A pose already. Next thing we want to do is apply some of the smart content I have. And in particular, it is a this Harbinger machine pistol. Really cool asset available from the Daz store. And we're going to attach these parts, these ammo pouches, to her combat armor. So let's go there. That's one of them. Let's select the... There's another one here. We'll select that, and let's put two of them on her waist. Uh, one of them could be a pistol, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I just want to make sure that that un something unrigged is attached. So on that side, and the next side will be here. All right. So we have some unrigged props attached to her. They look fine in Daz Studio the way they should. And the next step is just to export her using the Daz to Blender bridge. Now, I have a tool over here you can see to export, but you won't have that. I had to set that up. Where you'll see by default is under scripts, we go to bridges, Blender, and Daz to Blender. And it will ask you here if you're, you know, if it's an environment or prop, Genesis 8 or Genesis 3 character or both. It's a, there's an important note that you can only export Genesis 3 and Genesis 8 characters. I have not tried to export Genesis 1 or Genesis 2. I do have a Michael 3 character and I have tried to export him using the Daz to Blender bridge and it did not go so well. The, the, the rig was outside of the mesh. It didn't attach. It just looked horrible. Okay. You can do it with Diffeomorphic, but there's some extra tricks, there's some extra steps you have to do, and I'm gonna be creating a video on that. It may work for Michael 4 also, we'll find out. So it's Genesis 8, Genesis 3, just go ahead and accept that. And in these settings, these are the settings I use. Now, I use subdivision level zero because we wanna have the lowest possible subdivision you you can set, because when you export to Blender, you're going to, supposedly or likely want to be able to pose the character and the more subdivision levels you have the slower your system processes it takes more processing power and the harder it is to pose so we'll just set it to zero include morphs <clears throat> i would be very careful with including morphs one of the reasons is when you start including a large number of morphs morphs actually export over as i believe shape keys in blender and the more of those you have, you have a ton of those, it can really slow things down massively. It caused problems when I did it. So unless you are, you absolutely need or want some morphs exported with the character, I recommend not even doing it. I'm not gonna do it here. I don't have any morphs I need to have. So we're just gonna uncheck that. 
Collect textures. Now what this does, I kind of talked about it in my previous video, but I've learned more about it since then. And if you don't select collect textures, what it does is Daz Studio points Blender to the textures in the smart content folder where this smart content is installed. So it uses the actual textures where they're located. If you collect the textures, what it does is it makes a copy of the textures in the smart content folder and places them into a an export folder. And I'll show you where that's at. There's a potential problem related to that if you export more, more than one character. And I'll show you that as well. So right now we're going to collect textures to show you what kind of issues and what you can expect. Include animation data. We don't have any animation on this character. Remove any incompatible nodes. I don't see any difference when I check or uncheck that. I'm sure under certain circumstances this does make a difference, but not in anything I've done. So we'll just go ahead and select it. Now, we'll click Accept, and the script starts to run. Okay, And when it completes, we'll go and show you how to import the character into Blender. While that's working, what I want to do is show you where the these files are exported. This is where the, the default of where the character's textures or the object's textures are placed. It's a figure, it goes into figure zero, and the textures are located here. So what we're going to do, what you want to make sure of, is if you export a character, you're going to want to place these textures in a location where they're safe or where they're outside of this folder. So what we'll do is just take the textures right here, or even take just exports altogether. We can copy it out and we can remove that folder path because the DAS to Blender bridge generates it every time you do an export. So what we'll do is just create a, let's say a default folder location here and just go character and we'll put it right here, just right inside of the right inside of here. So we're going to take that and move the exports folder in here. Now the reason I do this is if you go to where this exports folder is located. Now it says figure zero. And you would think that the next time you load, export another figure, it would export it as figure one. So it would be placed in another folder location where it wouldn't overwrite what you just exported. But that's not the way it works. Maybe a future version of the DAS to Blender bridge will work that way. But if I export another character, it obliterates the folder here and we're going to lose access to the textures we just exported. So that's why I moved it into this folder path over here. And you'll see that when I get into Blender. I'm going to remap that, or you will want to remap to this folder path here, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go to Blender. Here's Blender 3.0. To import the character, we go into the add-on here. Now, if you're looking for how to install add-ons in Blender, you go to Edit Preferences, and there is an add-ons location here. And then what you do is you select DAS to, and there is the, the armature DAS to Blender. That's what you want to select. Just check the box, and then there will be another tab over here called DAS to Blender. So once you do that, the DAS to Blender tab shows up here. And we want to import Genesis Figure, which is what we exported from, from DAS Studio. And it takes a minute, and we'll see what it looks like as soon as she's imported. Here we go. Now, you saw that there. It showed up briefly. There, was, there were some Python errors. I haven't traced those errors down to figure out why that's happening, because whenever I import the character, it seems to import the way it should. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. The other thing is, in Blender 3.0, I noticed this pad here where the character standing on gets imported. I didn't notice that in Blender 2.93.4, and I haven't updated the DAS to Blender bridge. It's the one I've been using, which is 2.0. It's been out for a while. So to get rid of that plate there, 
I'm not sure. Well, let's see if it shows up in cycles. I'm not sure if it does. Let's go GPU compute and let's go to cycles and see if we see it. Yeah, it does. So the way to hide it is there's two of them, <laughs> cube one and cube two. So you just hide those two and it hides that. Here's the character. You'll notice, and one of the things is if you're doing this in, in Blender 2.93, Point four, which is the last one I used, that there's a ton of extra shapes and a hidden folder. I believe it's something that the DAS to Blender bridge uses to create the armature for the character. You can safely ignore them. If you can't delete them, otherwise it deletes the armature I found. So normally I just gather those all together and place them in a folder and then hide it. So that way I don't see them. They don't interrupt me with anything I'm doing with the character in the viewport. The other thing is, I like to hide the pose controls there if I want to see what the face looks like. And you do that by just going to the character, it looks like a stick figure over here. And you just collect the eye icon and that hides that. Some of these other shapes, uh, it's one of the things about the Dazda Blender Bridge I don't necessarily understand, but you can hide, these are extra shapes right here. You can just hide those shapes. I recommend not deleting them. I tried deleting them before I began this tutorial and it looked like it deleted the armature. One of the things you could do though is you can go and move them into this Daz hide folder, which is what I normally do. Move those into here and then in the Daz folder, Daz figure zero folder, we just have the character with all of their mesh and then we can collapse this over here. And usually what I do is just hide Daz root or delete Daz root, which you can do here. And so Daz hide is here and we could just collapse that and not even worry about it anymore. So uh, it also brings in the Daz to Blender Bridge brings in a Daz sun, which lights the scene. It's kind of nice. If you don't want it, you can delete it. Uh, I normally like the scene myself with HDRI or point lights I could create or my own sun in here. But you'll notice what I was talking about over here. And that's these props here. These are unrigged props and those ammo packs are not anywhere near, they're, they're hanging upside down, they aren't in the right position anymore on the, on the thighs and you have to manually go in and reposition those. Sometimes what I've also noticed is that those, if it's one of the weapons I put on her side or sometimes the pouches, their vertex groups are assigned to the arm. So if you move the arm, it starts to move the pouch and it does some kind of what appears to be some very strange things. So that's just a manual process. You just have to manually move them. The other thing is it looks like she's been dumped in a coat of clear coat. <laughs> her, um, her skin is not the best either. And I can show you how to work on adjusting that. So if we come over here to shading and we wait for this to load whenever it does, then we can go in and start accessing the nodes down here. And I'll also show you what happens if you lose access to that folder where you exported things from, which you will if you export more than one character, as I was saying. So we'll come over here and this, I believe, let's go into cycles. And let's first look at the skin. Like I said, I don't like how the Daz to Blender does the skin. I think the skin overall and the eyes look better in Diffeomorphic, which we'll see next. But let's select the character here. We're going to select her mesh. So come down here and go to female shape and we will go over here to shading oh, we have to get out of pose mode for this you can't be in that's just a tip and it's a tip to myself reminder myself too if you're in pose mode you can't i from what i've seen you can't access the shading nodes so to access them you have to get off the character go back in and now you have access to the shading nodes it doesn't work if when you're in pose mode so this is where you would go for the skin if you wanted to change some of the, the settings to see if you can fix it and get it to the shade or color you want, you would come into the character and you have different materials here for the different parts of surface of the body. These are like surfaces, surface settings in Daz Studio. So we come to the face over here and you have the image maps that are used for the face. In this case, the face, you've got a bump map, I believe it is, and a texture map. 
and you have some ability with the texture map connected to this iRay Uber skin, which is a node that's created, I believe, by the Daz to Blender bridge to change some of the subsurface scattering of the skin color, but it doesn't seem to have much of an impact on the skin and what it looks like. So even if I change, let's say, the subsurface scattering to green, it does change it a little bit and maybe it has an effect on the tint, but it's not a massive effect on the color of the skin. The actual skin color comes from the diffuse texture over here. And to change that diffuse texture, you're going to need to disconnect the image map. Now doing so means you lose some of the eyebrows that are part of the original skin texture. So you might want to, in this case, I didn't import specifically import separate eyebrows for the character. I was just using the default. But if you did import eyebrows that were separate from the skin, you could add them and they wouldn't be affected by removing the texture map here. So I could actually literally change the skin color now because the diffuse color, the map has been removed. So the, but the bump, the bump texture is still there. So I can liter literally change this to any color I want. I don't like the, I think it's harder or controlling the skin color isn't as effective here based on the way this is set up. With the Diffeomorphic, you'll see it actually uses standard Blender nodes and you have more or at least what I feel are better control over skin tone. Okay, One of the characters I'm using in my visual novel, her, her skin is blue, so I did use the Daz to Blender bridge initially, but I'm going to be using Diff Diffeomorphic and literally I had to detach the image and apply a skin color. And I, I added or imported a unique separate set of eyebrows that actually attach to the character where I could change the skin color. So you can do that here. You have an effect on the subsurface scattering color of the light underneath, beneath the skin. And you can affect some of the texture, the, the, the intensity of the bump image map that's been used for the texture of the skin. So you do have some f effect over that. Now, if we come down over to the clothing, if you select, let's say you select the vest here, you do have, let me come down here, vest, and you do have materials there as well. What we're gonna do is select the shirt of the vest here, and we'll go, it also has, everything is connected to this I ray Uber, either skin or a material here. And you do have the ability to set some of these values to impact the, the specular lighting that's coming off of the clothing here. If I believe I set if dulobe specular, I believe if I affect that, change the value of that. Okay, let me bring it back. change the value of this. In addition to glossy layered weight, let's go 0 0.100. Okay. And we'll bring this down to 0 0.100. It does, you start to see that the clothing, the shirt right there is not as glossy as it appeared to be before. So you can use a combination of the dual lobe specular and glossy layer to kind of tone down or increase the shininess of the material. If I go to shirt here, that's kind of her underarm area. We also have a different material and we can impact that as well. I tend, and, and with Diffeomorphic, it tends to import shiny also, but I think it's how I set up the character in uh, Daz Studio. I had kind of a shininess to the clothing and the armor, which I'm going to get rid of. But if we reduce the dual lobe specular over here and we bring that down to, let's just go zero points. Uh, five zero. So we'll do it over here, 0 0.050. And that further reduces the, sh uh, the other part of the shirt underneath the, underneath the uh, armpit there. And I can control that on all of the surface of the character here. So every part of the character, I can kind of change that and to get it the way I want it to look. There's another issue that I have with the Daz to Blender bridge. And I seem to get a lot of poke through with characters, fingers and feet and toes through boots and gloves. I do have somewhat of a problem with that with Diffeomorphic, but not as much as I do with the 
Daz to Blender Bridge. One way I resolve that, since I'm not taking the character's gloves off, is just literally to delete the faces of the polygons. And how I can do that, and that may not be the best way or optimal way to do it, depending on how you want to set up your character and what you plan to do with them. I'm going to go in here and select the... I'm going to select the character's body, which is over here. Okay. I'm going to go into edit mode and her body selected so I can come in here and I can just say, you know what, delete all those polygons or delete the vertices. And now all the vertices are gone, but her fingers, parts of her fingers and the faces of the Actually, I think I'm doing it by vertices. Vertices of the fingers are missing. So if I take the gloves off, part of her fingers are going to be missing. In this case, it's not going to matter for me. There may be a better way to do this, or there's a better way to do this if you don't want that to happen. So I noticed uh, I noticed a lot of poke through like that when I'm using the Daz to Blender bridge, just less of it in Diffeomorphic. And you manually have to adjust these right here. You can move those by going back into object mode. You can grab one of the pouches and you can say G for grab and you can move it around how you want to. There's a few more things I want to show you before we get into looking at diffeomorphic. And one of those is what I talked about earlier where we can lose access to the textures that we exported if we leave them in that export folder where the Daz to Blender bridge places them, which is here. So it's fine now, but let's say we want to export a second figure. As I was saying before, whatever textures we have in here get obliterated, they get overwrite, overwritten with the new textures we export. So we moved the textures into this character folder, save them off in a safe place. I'm going to show you what this looks like. We have to close Blender because it's accessing these textures in this exported folder. So we're going to close that. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll save this in the same folder, the, the character. So we're going to save it and then close. So if we delete this exports folder here, which we can because the Daz to Blender bridge will regenerate it if it needs to. We'll delete that. All right, so we're going to go where we save the character. And here she is. Now, what you'll see when we go to cycles is she is going to, basically her surfaces are going to look all pink. And what that indicates is cycles can't find textures you've indicated in the folders where you said they're supposed to be. So let's go to cycles. And now she looks almost completely pink. So the way to resolve this is because we save the textures off in a different location, we can repoint to those textures going to File here in Blender. We'll go File and go to External Data and you go all the way down to Find Missing Files. And it's going to ask you where are the missing files that you, we can't find. And what I'm going to do is come in here to the folder location where we saved everything and say find the missing files. So this should actually fix most of it, but what I found is the textures don't always point to the right location. You'll notice here on her breastplate that the texture just doesn't look right. And let me show you in shading, in the shader nodes, what's going on there and why it's happening. So we'll come over here to shading let this load up. Okay, so we're here looking at the character. Definitely the textures don't look right. So let's go in to the vest at first. We'll just start there. We'll go to vest and we'll look at one of the materials here. Let's go ahead and select female vest armor plating. And that's going to bring us over here to, we're in pose mode. Get out of that. And here is our texture, or the materials. These are textures over here it's importing. And the problem is, and if you go down through these textures here, you'll see, let's select, and right now, the texture for the vest is actually, if you can see that, it's actually pointing to the pants. So it's applying the pants textures to the breastplate, which is the wrong texture. And what we have to do is just go and remap that by selecting 
vest. Okay, and selecting there and say open image. Now it kind of fixes it. You start to see the the labels here. And if you go through all of these and fix that, just go and remap these to the correct folder path. You don't even have to select the particular file it needs. You just have to remap the folder. So we just need to say, okay, it's in the vest folder. Come down and we go to each one of these. Okay, that's actually pointed to the right thing. This is pointed to the right thing. This is not pointed to the right thing. So I'm going to select vest here. And the last one is the vest here from the pants. Just say open image, okay? And you see now the breastplate looks right. So it's a manual process. It's not 100% because you have to go through every single one of these materials and remap them. So collecting the textures, this points out that collecting the textures can be a painful process. Usually what I would do is I would just use the textures where they are in the smart, smart content folder and not collect the textures, but there may be a reason you want to do it. Let's say for whatever reason you want to un uninstall DAS Studio and you lose access to the textures in the smart content folder. You're going to need to have these textures in a location where they can be accessed. So collecting the textures the way we did is important. But normally, you know, DAS Studio is not going to be something I uninstall. I'm going to be using more characters in the future. So so I wouldn't recommend necessarily using this path. I would just not collect the textures. If you don't collect the textures, it's much easier to deal with in here. It's just in the DAS to Blender bridge, you have the option of using the textures where they are in the smart content folder or collecting them and having them in a separate location. The next thing I want to discuss, one more thing before we go and move over to diffeomorphic and this will apply to diffeomorphic as well because it's more it has to do with subdividing the character so they the character looks good in the final render when we export the character we set subdivision to level zero so when we look at it in here in blender or I'm sorry, in cycles, we see the edge of the ear looks pretty jagged and other surfaces, the hair looks a little jagged too, depending on how close we are. So to fix that, what we do is for the character, it already, the DAS to Blender already sets a subdivision level. Now, I wanna point something out. There is something called adaptive subdivision and it is in the experimental features here, you go to experimental, and you can set the maximum subdivision level to use. It's default of 12. Now I've messed around with this, so I set the default to three. And when we go into our subdivision here, we see a new checkbox called adaptive subdivision. It's great because what it does is the further you are away from the character, the less it subdivides the character's mesh. The closer you are, the more it subdivides up to the maximum subdivision level you set here. I believe that's correct, which is three. Now, what I've noticed is that for whatever reason, with adaptive subdivision, even though I set it to a level of three, if I get close to the character like this and I go to render, it just takes forever for it to load the meshes and get to the point where it's starts rendering, um, especially with the hair. And so when I set a non-adaptive subdivision, I set it to, let's say, set the hair, I'm sorry, uh, set the, the render for the render for the character to three which is fine and then we go into the hair and we add a subdivision modifier and if you're if you're close you probably want to do this because the hair will look blocky if you don't and i set the subdivision level of that to about two or three uh, so we're going to remove adaptive subdivision and let's just set it to viewport level to zero which is what we have. And let's set render to three. Two might be fine. I'm gonna set it to three. Don't turn on the viewport or the editing, which won't matter because the viewport level is zero anyway. And before we render this, let's get a camera over here. Go control shift zero, and that will move the camera over to where we are right here. So right there, we'll get the camera. It'll focus in on our ear area so we can see how smooth that is. That should be fine. 
let's go ahead and render this. I do want to point out, unlike in DAS Studio, you can actually render from perspective view. You can render from a camera or perspective view. In Blender, you only render from a camera. So it's important that you set up a camera into the position that's in your perspective view so that you can actually render what you see. Because if you don't, what you're rendering is going to look very different from what you have set up in perspective view in the viewport. And here we are. It's starting the render right here. Everything looks good. You see her ear is much smoother. There could be some denoising I need to use, which will be done after we finish all of our samples because of the way I've set up compositing in this particular case. But the hair is smoother because it should have subdivision level three applied and the character's mesh has subdivision level three applied, which is much smoother than we saw in the viewport. And it's important to note too that you have to be careful with the subdivision levels you choose. Three may be too much. Much. You may have to go down to two. Uh, two is still better than none. One is better than none. And uh, you just have to be careful with how much memory you have because the more subdivision you have, the longer it takes to, to load the mesh both into memory and into the GPU and the longer it's going to take to render. So just be careful of that. This looks pretty good. You can see the character smooth, and that's just really what I wanted to point out. Um, and this, like I said, is going to apply not only to when you export using uh, DAS to Blender Bridge, but you can also use this in Diffeomorphic, the same technique for setting up um, subdivision levels. Now, I don't do it on any of the clothing because the clothing looks pretty good already and um, looks fine. So we're good there. One last thing I want to point out, because this is about tips and tricks for uh, effectively using the DAS to Blender bridge and Diffeomorphic. Before you actually export the character, you can do the following. Let me bring up DAS Studio. All right, here we are in DAS Studio. And what I want to point out is before you actually export the character, one of the, one of the other things you can do to lower the resolution. You can select the character and anything attached to the character. So we're gonna come over here to Sharon Walker and we're gonna go into mesh resolution here. Select that and you'll see it's at base resolution, which is great. I think that when I saved this character, I had set all of her resolution to base, what you'll probably likely find is that the resolution level is high resolution. That's a default higher subdivision level, so you may want to lower this to base. And all of the items on the character, you can just check to see if it's base also. And the reason I was mentioning, uh, I mentioned this as as before, when you have the subdivision or the resolution set higher, it increases your processing, the amount of processing you need to do. And when you're animating, you'll get much smoother movements of the character and it'll be easier to position the character by reducing the subdivision levels. You don't add subdivision levels until you get to the point where you're actually rendering. And just as before, this applies to whether you are exporting using da the DAS to Blender Bridge or Diffeomorphic. So let's go ahead and check out Diffeomorphic. Before we start exporting in DAS Studio using Diffeomorphic, I wanted to show you the link where you can download the tool. The version I'm using is the latest version, that's DAS Importer version 1.6. And this is the website where you can download that. It's absolutely free. I'll provide a link in the description below. But what you want to do is select this zip file here. It's stable version 1.60. Also, there is a great link down here under document documentation and tutorial tutorials setting things up this provides a page that has a perfect information with a lot of screenshots that show you how to set up the tool it's very self-explanatory if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments below but it's pretty clear how to use it how to set it up both in setting up the script in DAS studio and also connecting the add-on in blender so with that let's head over to DAS Studio. We're back in DAS Studio, and what we want to do now is export Sharon for use by the Diffeomorphic plugin in Blender. And one thing I want to do is take her clothing here, take her attachments, the pouches. I don't have her saved right now with the pat the those attachments on. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and select save, and we're going to save her in the location 
where I have her for export. So come over here. There it is, library, scene subsets, and I'm gonna select Sharon over here. Save that. So she saved, yes, I wanna replace it. So she saved in the APOs and her pouches are connected. We're going to select export to Blender and we want to go into the same location where our duff file is located where that contains the character we want to export into Blender. It's important that this DBZ file be in exactly the same folder. And I believe there's a note of that in the installation for Diffeomorphic. So we're gonna select her, gonna remove the duff because it adds a .dbz extension anyway, and select that and select save. So she, the DBZ file is gonna be in the same folder, same exact location as the duff file. So that's done and you can see over here in the folder, DBZ, duff, and the duff.png. So we're going to go now into Blender. Let's bring that up here, select. So now we have Blender, we're going to delete the default cube and we're going to use the Diffeomorphic tool, which is DAS Importer. One of the things I do want to mention is before you use Diffeomorphic, it needs to know where all the library paths are, where the paths are to all your libraries related to DAS Studio content, because the Diffeomorphic plugin goes to the location where the smart content textures are, and it accesses those for the character here. So it just uses your smart content folder. It doesn't have a means like the DAS to Blender bridge to export the or collect the textures into a different folder although you could do that manually it just uses the textures in the folder where they're located so what you want to do is go to global settings and part of the process of setting up diffeomorphic you'll see in the steps it has you create a json file that contains the paths to all your libraries so what you have to do in here is you open the global settings and make sure you load root paths and go into that json file that saved during that setup process so you come in here go to audio series i've already got a folder location where i've placed that json file which for me is under diffeomorphic it's right here and load root paths and you'll see all of the folders are exactly the ones I use for my library. They're non-standard folder paths, a uh, non-standard from DAS Studio. And this was already correct. I just wanted to show you the steps that you need to make sure you do that before you export. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. So one of the things we're going to do is I want to show you what import DAS does and why you probably want to use easy import DAS because it does a lot of things for you. So let's select import DAS. We're going to go to the audio series folder. So DAS 3D, we're going to go to Diffeomorphic, not Diffeomorphic, sorry. We're going to go to the library. We're going to scene subsets and we're going to select Sharon, the DUF file. The DBZ file is in there that tells the importer how to import her into, into uh, Blender. So it's going to run for a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, so you get some warnings saying that there are some updates and the lighting may not be enough for the scene. They're not errors, they're just warnings. So you can say, okay, we're gonna move in and we're going to look at her. There's one thing I wanna point out. So let's go into pose mode and I'll show you why you probably wanna use easy import. So we're gonna select a bone right here, use rotate and we're gonna rotate her. And you see what happens? The rig is attached to the mesh of the character, but the char the rig of her clothing isn't attached to the rig of the character. If you use easy import, that's done automatically for you. So I just kind of wanted to demonstrate, if you see this happening, it's likely you want to switch to the importer. Now you can do that manually. I haven't done it manually. There's some settings and configurations here where you can, you can likely uh, set that up. If you want to do it manually, I don't, because I think that the DAS importer, easy DAS import, does a very good job of it. So let's re-import her back in here. There we go, and we're gonna go back in, select her, and now you'll see how much better it is. Okay, 
So we don't have as many warnings because the DAS importer did a lot for us. I think the only warning I saw there was, hey, you may not have sufficient lighting to really light the character properly for cycles, I think it said. So before we even go into cycles or anything else, we're going to select the bone. Actually, let's select, we're going to go into, we'll select the character here. And we're going to go into, um, actually, we got to select the pose over here. So we're going to open this up and go down to where it shows pose, the figure here. And that'll allow us to enter pose mode under here, under object. So go to select pose mode, select a bone, and we can rotate it. And now you'll see when you rotate, when you select that bone, everything moves as it should. So you don't have to set that up manually. So one of the things I want to do is let's take the pose, let's take the hide the rig. So just go to the character here, looks like a stick figure. Just click the eye icon and that hides the rig. And let's go into cycles. Let's make sure we're, we've got the, we're going to go into cycles. We're going to make sure we have the GPU selected. And I think I'll probably just set it to 500 samples. Okay. And this is cycles X and cycles X and 3.0, 3.0 is nice. I like it. <laughs> so let's go here and we're going to go to cycles. Let's see what she looks like. So I think she looks a lot better. The skin particularly. I mean, look at the skin. Now, one of the things I want to do, because it doesn't bring in a Daz Sun, so let's get out of pose mode, and we're going to go to object mode. Let's select the light over here. And what I want to do is grab the light, and we're going to move it in the, should be the Y direction. Do that. Bring it back, GX, okay. And that may be kind of high up, and that's pretty far away. So let's bring it a GY. Actually, let's bring it over here. So what I was doing is I was just clicking on the object and hitting G for grab and you can hit select G and then X to move it in the G X to move it in the X direction like this or G Y to move it in the Y direction or G Z to move it up and down in that direction. So it restricts the movement of the object. Okay. Or you can just grab it and move it around Free, freely. But if you look at the character, I think the character skin looks a heck of a lot better in Diffeomorphic. It doesn't look pale. It looks full. It looks proper. Subsurface scattering looks amazing. It looks in cycles right now, exactly the way she looked in iRay in Daz Studio. Her hair looks good. Everything's just better, I believe. So even the eye textures and the, the images for the maps for the eye textures, it all looks fantastic. Looks so much better. Now, I do have a problem with the specular lighting on the clothing is definitely extremely high. And one of the things we can do to fix that is the same thing we pretty much did with the Daz to Blender bridge. We go in here and we look at the shading nodes. Now, the shading nodes are going to look very much different because Diffeomorphic doesn't create the iRay Uber shader nodes. It just uses the standard Blender shader nodes. And I feel you have better control over certain features like skin tone and changing specular lighting and controlling the surface of the character. Okay, this is what she looks in Eevee, which is not terrible, but if I wanted to do some more in Eevee, I might have to bring the light in closer or what I could do is change some of the skin tone. If we come down to where the character is located, we're going to go to her mesh, all right? One of the things is it separates the mesh from the character, it's like, got a, I guess it's a pointer or a reference in here, but the meshes are actually stored under a different collection. I like to bring them in all under one collection into one convenient area. So what I do is I grab the meshes and just drag them down to where the, I guess the references are here underneath the stick figure of Sharon where the pose and the pose sets are. So just bring it down in there. So it takes it out of the meshes collection and just delete the meshes collection. And then it's pretty much set up and organized the way I want. You noticed in the Daz to Blender bridge, there's a bunch of con containers, collections it creates, and you just don't have as much, I guess it's cleaner with the, da the Diffeomorphic is what I'm trying to say. So what we're going to do is come over here and you'll notice the nodes are definitely quite a bit different. And I think it's easier to deal with. If we come over here and look at, let's say her shirt sleeve. So we come down here into the materials and let's look at the shirt, I, I believe it's just shirt sleeve. 
one or the other. It's They're not clearly named. So what I'm going to do is change the specular lighting on that. Let's go back into Cycles, get a better view here, because it really looks bright here in Cycles. So we're going to go to the specular, and the way to remove some of that specular lighting is just, we've got, and I hope you can see that. Let me bring this over a little bit. The microphone might be cutting that off. So bring it over here. We got another image node down here. So let's come over here to our principal BSDF. And we go down to specular. And if we, if we change that, that is going to change the specular lighting on our sleeve here. You see, as we had it up, it's really, really shiny, really glossy. We bring it down, it's not so glossy. So we go 0.50. We can leave some specular on there if we want to. We can go to the armor details or actually the armor plating right here. And we can zoom out. It also has some specular lighting as well. or so it, it also has a principal BSDF. This is almost like you can think of materials as like um, surface areas in DAS Studio, but they're materials here and you can affect them through the, the shader nodes. So we're going to lower that which you can see the armor isn't as shiny as it was before. And we can just do that. The sleeves are a little bit bright. So we're gonna come over here. I thought I set those. Oh, probably need to reduce them some more though. Bring it down even more and we can affect the armor. And you can see how the specular lighting is being reduced. We can do it on like the armor as well. The, the I believe I had some colored areas. And one thing I wanna point out is if you change the color, let's say you have like a glove here and it has different surface areas on it, but you didn't change the default textures or colors of the surface areas of that glove, then it imports in with one material and you can only affect the material on that one surface, which is the entire glove. If in Daz Studio, you go in and you affect the surface areas. You change any of the surface areas. You can change like the, the colors or the textures of those. Then what it does is it actually will create a different material area in Blender. To summarize, if you take the glove and although it has different surface areas, let's go ahead and look at it in Daz Studio. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I hope I'm clear on this. If, if not, then, hey, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to explain it better. But if I go to the gloves here, okay, Sharon Walker's gloves, and I go to the surfaces, it's got all these surfaces on the glove, okay? And those surfaces are there whether I change the default colors or not, all right? If I don't change the default colors and I just use the glove as it is from Smart Content, then when I import it into Blender, there will just be one material area. And I'll get one set of nodes and I can change the specular lighting and things, but it'll affect the entire glove. There's some characters I have like that. But since I went into Daz Studio and, and, and literally changed the base color of all of these areas of each area of the glove, or most of them, I don't think all of them, then it actually added a new material zone here when I imported to Blender. I didn't change all of them because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven surfaces on the glove, but one, two, three, four, five surfaces that come in as material areas for the glove when I bring that into Blender. Because I think some of those surface areas I left as default. That's just one thing I kind of want to point out. You can add materials into Blender, but you would have to define those material areas on the surface of the object. It might just be easier if you want to be able to control each of those surfaces through materials in Blender to go and slightly change the default color of those material areas. So it generates material separate seven separate material areas in this case for the glove. Just It's just something I wanted to point out and, may, and allow you to be aware of. But you'll also notice in Diffeomorphic here, look at this. All of the attached unrigged props are placed exactly where they're located in DAS Studio. You have two on the hips here, okay? And two on the thighs. You go over to Blender, two on the hips, two on the thighs. You don't have a problem with unrigged props being placed in random locations or different locations that you do with the DAS to Blender bridge. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about. Like I said, the other thing is, 
skin tone. The character looks amazing by default in cycles right here. Sometimes with some of the characters that I import, I notice that the character's skin in Eevee, it's maybe a little bit dark and I have to do some modification if I want it to look good in Eevee. Some of them, like one of my other characters, she looks great when I import her, but I guess based on her skin tone I provided, her skin looks really red in Eevee. I'm not gonna be using Eevee for anything I'm doing. I'm gonna be using cycles mostly, maybe some of the materials I add to my next version of the visual novel, but um, she looks amazing in cycles. So, and you can now you can see why I prefer Diffeomorphic so much more than the Daz to Blender Bridge. It just does things, I feel at this point, much better. The Daz to Blender Bridge has improved greatly from 1.0 to 2.0 now. The armors and everything, as you saw, look pretty good. So it's a significant improvement, but I think they have a long way to go. I think Diffeomorphic is actually older. It's been around longer, so they've had more practice at making it good. <laughs> and that's it, pretty much. This looks almost identical in cycles as it does to NVIDIA iRay, as you can see over here. Yeah, just, um, I think I've got some, um, the reason I've got some uh, denoising on over here that I don't have in cycles, but it uh, looks amazing. So that's it right there. If you have any questions on anything, let me know in the comment section. And you will also find, and I found, that when I import props into Blender using Diffeomorphic, it seems to work better there too. There's just something about the Daz to Blender bridge is not quite there yet. So anyway, I hope this helps out. Whichever tool you do decide to use, I hope you are able to get your characters in there and have them working well, because Blender's an amazing tool for animating tons of, tons of, it's just so powerful, you know? Daz Studio is a great tool, uh, but the level of animation and I wanna, what, I want, what I want to do in the future with uh, procedural materials and doing some cool VFX, I just can't do in Daz Studio. So anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Also, I have a link in the description to my Discord. Feel free to join. There is a channel in there. It's a work in process, excuse the mess, but there is a channel, CGI and animation, where you can go and you can talk. I'll try to be in there, answer questions, and we can help each other out. I wanna be able to help other 3D animators to tell their story. I think it's, 3D animation is the greatest combination of advanced technical skill and artistic expression. I just absolutely freaking love it. So anyway, if you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'd really massively appreciate it. I'm really trying to make a go of doing this as well as creating my visual novel. So like I said, the visual novel's cool. It's out now, a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot of hard work, but I have some amazing friends that helped me make it the quality uh, adventure it is. And I'm working on episode two right now. I am going to try to continue to get tutorial videos out every Monday. I'm gonna try my best. It's gonna be a lot of work, especially when all the work I have to do with the visual novel, but I'm gonna do my best to do weekly tutorial videos. And I'm almost also might throw a stream in there every once in a while. I might replace the weekly tutorial with a stream or I might have the stream extra. And I'll try to schedule that in advance so you know when I'm going to have it. I uh, like talking to other animators. It's a lot of fun getting in there and just playing around with Blender and Daz Studio and showing you what I'm up to. But anyway, Click the subscribe button, click like, comment, let me know what you think, and we will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.